Let's get right into it. Number 9. Left-handedness. About 10% of the world's population is left-handed. But why? Why aren't we all right-handed? Or why isn't it a 50-50 split? It's a genetic puzzle that doctors can't solve. Handedness is definitely linked to our genes, but it's not as simple as a single lefty gene. There are probably dozens of genes involved, and even if you have those genes, it doesn't guarantee you'll be a lefty. Identical twins, who have the exact same DNA, don't always have the same dominant hand. Throughout history, being left-handed was seen as a bad thing. The word sinister actually comes from the Latin word for left. In many cultures, lefties were forced to write with their right hand. But being a lefty might have some advantages. Some studies suggest left-handed people might be more creative. They also have an advantage in certain sports, like boxing and baseball, because their movements are less predictable to right-handed opponents. So while doctors can't explain it, being a lefty is just another one of the body's weird quirks. Number 8. Hiccups. Hiccups are one of the most annoying and useless things your body does. It's a sudden, involuntary spasm of your diaphragm, followed by your vocal cords snapping shut. That's what makes the hick sound. It's the sound of your body betraying you for no good reason. But what's the point? Absolutely nothing. At least, not for us. One leading theory is that hiccups are an evolutionary leftover from our ancient, water-dwelling ancestors. Some scientists believe the hiccup reflex is similar to how amphibians, like tadpoles breathe. They gulp water, and a flap closes off their lungs so the water goes to their gills. Our hiccup reflex might be a ghost of that ancient mechanism, a program that never got deleted from our brain's hard drive. So every time you get the hiccups, you're just channeling your inner tadpole. Congratulations. Number 7. Goosebumps. You're listening to a powerful piece of music, or you're watching a scary movie. Suddenly the tiny hairs on your arms stand up. You've got goosebumps. These little bumps are caused by tiny muscles at the base of each hair follicle, called the erector pili. When they contract, they pull the hair upright. Back when our ancestors were covered in thick fur, this was actually useful. Puffing up their fur made them look bigger and scarier to predators. It also trapped a layer of air, helping Helping them stay warm. But for us, with our mostly naked bodies, it's pretty much useless. A tiny patch of raised hair isn't going to scare off a mugger, and it's not going to keep you warm in a snowstorm. The real mystery is why we get them from emotions. Why does a beautiful song or a touching movie scene trigger this ancient, primal reflex? Doctors call this aesthetic chills, but they can't fully explain the connection. It's like your nervous system is so moved, it reverts back to its caveman settings. Number 6. Contagious Yawning You see someone yawn, and suddenly you feel an unstoppable urge to yawn too. It's like a weird, silent command that your brain just can't ignore. But why? Scientists have a few ideas, but none of them are a slam dunk. One popular theory is that it's all about empathy. When you see someone yawn, your brain's empathy circuits light up. It's your brain's way of saying, Hey, I see you're tired. I'm tired too. We're in this together. It's like a secret, sleepy handshake. But here's the creepy part. It's not just humans. Chimpanzees, dogs, and even wolves do it. And studies show you're more likely to catch a yawn from someone you're close to, like a family member or a friend. So next time you yawn after your boss does, maybe it means you secretly like them. Number 5. Hypnic Jerks You're just drifting off to sleep, cozy in your bed. Suddenly, your whole body twitches, and you feel like you're falling. You wake up with a jolt, your heart pounding. This is a hypnic jerk, and it's a completely normal, yet terrifying, experience. About 70% of people experience them. But why does it happen? One theory, known as the falling primate hypothesis, suggests it's a ghost from our evolutionary past. The idea is that our primate ancestors slept in trees. As they relaxed and fell asleep, their brain might misinterpret the muscle relaxation as a sign that they were falling out of the tree. So, it would send a jolt to the muscles to catch themselves. It's like a false alarm from your brain's ancient security system. Another idea is that it's just a simple misfire between the nerves in your brain as you transition from wakefulness to sleep. Your brain is shutting down for the night, and sometimes a few wires get crossed. Whatever the reason, it's a jarring reminder that even in sleep, your body is doing weird things you don't understand. Number 4. The Placebo Effect You have a headache. A doctor gives you a sugar pill and tells you it's a powerful new painkiller. You take it, and a few minutes later, your headache is gone. This is the placebo effect. It's your brain tricking your body into feeling better. And it's one of the biggest mysteries in medicine. It's not just about thinking you're better. The placebo effect can cause real, physical changes in your body. It can lower your blood pressure and reduce pain. How does it work? Nobody knows for sure. One theory is that the act of taking a pill, even a fake one, triggers your brain to release its own natural painkillers, called endorphins. It's like your brain has its own pharmacy, and the placebo is the key to unlocking it. But it's not just about pills. The placebo effect can work with fake surgeries, fake injections, and even just a doctor's reassuring words. It's a powerful reminder that your mind has a lot more control over your body than you think.
Number 3. The Blind Mind's Eye Close your eyes and picture an apple. What do you see? For most of you, there's probably a red or green apple floating around in your mind right now. But for about 2% of people, there's nothing. Just darkness. Complete emptiness. These people have something called aphantasia. Their mind's eye is completely blind. Imagine trying to remember what your mom looks like, or your best friend, or your pet. People with aphantasia can't do that. They know what these people look like, but they can't see them in their mind. It's like having a perfect computer that can store all the information about what something looks like, but the screen is broken. Some people with aphantasia don't even know they have it. They grow up thinking that when people say, picture this, or imagine that, they're speaking metaphorically. Scientists have no idea why some brains come with this feature turned off. Some people develop aphantasia after brain injuries. One day they're visualizing things normally, the next day, their mind's eye goes dark. People with aphantasia can still dream in images, their sleeping brain can create vivid visual scenes, but their waking brain can't picture a simple triangle. It's like having a TV that only works when you're asleep. Some people with aphantasia have become incredible artists. They can draw a amazing pictures despite not being able to visualize them first. They're creating masterpieces completely blind. Number 2. Phantom Limb Pain Someone loses an arm or a leg, but they can still feel it. Not just feel it, but feel pain in it. This is called phantom limb pain. It's a bizarre and often agonizing condition. The brain is still sending signals to the missing limb, and when those signals don't get a response, the brain interprets it as pain. It's like your brain is screaming into a void, and the echo comes back as pure agony. The pain can feel like cramping, burning, or even being stabbed. For a long time, doctors thought people were just making it up, but now we know it's a real neurological condition. One of the most effective treatments is surprisingly simple. It's called mirror therapy. The patient places a mirror so it reflects their existing limb. This tricks the brain into seeing the missing limb. They can then move the phantom limb, which can relieve the pain. It's a mind-bending solution to a mind-bending problem. Number 1. Acquired Savant Syndrome Imagine waking up one morning and suddenly being able to do complex math in your head or play piano like Mozart. This actually happens to some people after they get hit in the head. It's called Acquired Savant Syndrome, and it's one of medicine's biggest mysteries. Jason Paget was just a regular guy working at a furniture store. He gets attacked outside a karaoke bar and takes a nasty hit to the head. The next morning, he wakes up seeing complex mathematical patterns everywhere he looks. He could suddenly understand and draw intricate geometric shapes that most math professors struggle with. This guy went from selling couches to doing advanced calculus in his head overnight. Tony Sicoria got struck by lightning while talking on a payphone. After he recovered, he suddenly had an overwhelming urge to play piano. This guy had never touched a piano in his life before getting zapped. Now he's performing concerts and composing classical music. Doctors have no clue how this happens. It's like these injuries somehow unlock hidden talents that were just sitting there in our brains all along. Some scientists think we might all have these abilities buried in our heads. The injury just breaks down some mental wall that's keeping us from accessing them. But these cases are super rare, and most head injuries just leave you with a headache and regret. And these newfound abilities often come with downsides. Many savants struggle with other basic tasks or develop obsessive behaviors. Imagine being able to calculate pi to 1,000 thousand digits, but forgetting how to make small talk. That's often the trade-off these people face. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.